name.
morning to all of us, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to come. Thank you, Church, and we're glad to to be back here this morning. And we're we're so excited, and uh, we're we're blessed that we we are, we are able to spend our last Sunday here in the United States, uh, here in your church. So, before I will share the word of God, I will ask my wife to sing a, a song and. Uh, I will share the word of God tonight. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through private pain Leaving fear to fear Laughter hides their silent cries only Jesus hears people need the Lord people need the Lord at the end of broken dreams the open door people need the Lord people need the Lord when will we realize people need the called to take his light to a word where wrong seems right what could be too great a cause for sharing life with ones who's lost through his love our hearts can feel all the grave they bear they must hear the words of life only we can share people need the lord people so thankful this morning that uh, we're able to to be here and to be 
with you, worshiping God together. Amen. And uh, I just really thank the Lord, want to thank the Lord for His faithfulness, for His goodness in our life. We've been here for four months already. And I can say with all my heart, with no doubt, that God has been faithful, that God bless our trip. Uh, and, and our travel, our trip is uh, very fruitful. And we're ready to be back. And our, our mind is, is, is start traveling now. But we have uh, four days, I think. We will leave on Thursday. But uh, I just want to thank this, uh, to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of you, church. And in four months, uh, God protected us. We traveled many times. I, I've been driving a couple times for 12 hours straight. First time I did that here, and it's a blessing. And in four months, I was able to three blue lights three three times, and and I don't want to see blue light anymore. And it's really really hard, but in uh, the conclusion, God is good, God is faithful. He, he always protected us in our way. There are I I can remember at least three three times that we almost car almost hit us, but God protected us here and um, he's good he's he's faithful and uh, and we're so blessed uh, to meet good christian good church good people and uh, really praise god for allowing our path to cross and we don't only god did not only give us partner here in in murphy in upper pit street but god gave us a family here thank you so much for your love pastor for your love to the mission to the work of god to the servant of god and you're for us you're not only a partner but you're a friend and a family and i really thank uh, take this opportunity pastor how blessed we are because god allow us to to meet all of you amen so please pray for us we're uh, we will uh, tomorrow we will leave here early in the morning this afternoon, uh, we will be in Mount Zion Baptist Church, but we will leave early in the morning on Friday to pack up our things. We will drive to Marietta, Ohio to prepare our things because we need to bring back the car that we're using in Michigan on Tuesday. And uh, we still have one church to go on Wednesday there in Michigan. And on Thursday, we will fly out on the Philippines. We will fly from Detroit to New York, New York to Milan, Milan to Dubai, Dubai to Philippines. We will arrive there Thursday night and we might able to reach our church early morning on Sunday and I think I'm ready to preach next Sunday in the Philippines and I'm so excited to preach in our language and it's been my nose is bleeding for poor four months now i have a hard time pastor in speaking english but i i try my my best amen so i have a, a friend here pastor told me brother miguel you speak in english but you know what i have a hard time of understanding your english well i told him that's fine my brother because i don't understand all your english too so it's just fair so i hope you will understand this morning amen i'll try my best so let's open our bible and the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, I will start my reading in verse 19. Just follow with your eyes, verse 19 down to verse 21. And I will read, just follow with your eyes. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through. And steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor wrath does corrupt, and where the thieves do not break through nor steal. In verse 21, for where your treasure is, there where your heart be also. Shall we pray? Our gracious God and heavenly Father, we're coming to thy throne this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege an opportunity that you've given to us that we can gather together to worship you, to glorify you, to study your word. Lord, I pray that may you prepare our hearts this morning. 
May you once again, Lord, spoke to our heart, challenge us with your word, and help us, Lord, to understand the message and to apply this in our life. Lord, may you use me this morning to be a blessing to your people. May you give me word to say, and may you get all the glory this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I would like to speak the message I entitled this morning, Secure the True Treasure. Secure the true treasure. This verse that we read, actually this is a part of a sermon of the mouth. So Jesus is the one who is speaking here. This is a sermon coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. So he is the one who is speaking here. Don't, don't get me wrong, all, all the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is a word of God. But I, what I want to say and I want you to, to know this is in red letters with meaning Jesus himself is the one who is speaking here. And I want you to see in the verse that we read in verse 20 and verse 19 as an introduction. I want you to see number one the given instruction. The, in verse 19 and in verse 20 we can see the given instruction. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth. In verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. This is a given instruction. And I believe every time the Lord Jesus Christ give us an instruction, it is always correct. It is always certain. It is always clear. But so many times, it is very Challenging. This is a very challenging instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. That's the given instruction. Not only given instruction, but we can see, I want you to see the guiding interpretation. There is a guiding interpretation here because if we will not be careful in reading this verse, if we will not be aware in understanding what Jesus is saying here, we might come to the point that Jesus is against riches. We might think that having material things, having a lot of money is against of the will of God. There, that's why I want that to make clear this morning that Jesus is not against riches. There is nothing wrong having material things. There's nothing wrong saving money for our future. There's nothing wrong in having a lot of things in this world. Okay, don't be careless. So many Christians, I heard them, I heard many people say, well, I am a Christian. When I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. I don't need material things. I can, when I'm die, I'm not cannot bring anything in this world. I don't need money. I don't need material things. You might write in some way, in some other point, but you're wrong because whether we like it or not, we need material things. We are in the world. We need money. We need material things. Whether we like it or not, we will spend money okay if uh, i want you to be aware of that i'm i'm aware if we will read that the bible in in timothy if we will read the the bible says for the love of the money is the root of all evil it didn't say the money is evil but the love of the money is evil money is a neutral and there's nothing to do the money there's nothing to do with their it good or bad. Money is a neutral. The, the one who decides to money to become bad or good is the heart of man. Amen. Amen. That's why I tell to, to our friend, to some people then, to some Christian, if you think money is evil, money is a problem, then just give me your money so that you don't have a problem. So that you, I don't, I want to help you, but Jesus is simply saying here that don't just focus on the material things, but on the heaven also. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is simply saying, don't invest too much in this world, but think about the treasure in heaven. And a good example of that is we can find in Luke chapter 12. I just want you to, to read Luke chapter 12 in verse 16 to verse 21. And 
And I will read you. We, we know the story, but, but I want you to, to see or to, I will read and just follow with your eyes. Matthew, what I say, Luke chapter 12 in verse 16 down to verse 21. This is a parable of a rich young man that, that he has a lot of things. In verse 16, and he speak a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and bear greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my good. And I will say to my, I will say to my soul, Soul, thou has much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. In verse 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? In verse 21, So, he, so is he that laid up treasure for himself and rich toward God. This man a lot, have a lot of material things in this world, but he forgot the most important thing, and that is where he will spend his eternity. Amen. He forgot to prepare about the most important thing. Christian, think about this. When it comes to earthly treasure, we are so interested. We care too much. We invest too much. But when it comes of spiritual things, of about heavenly treasure, so many Christians, they are not interested. They don't care. They don't want to, to hurt. And, and here we are, we keep saying, we're Christian. When I die, we're going to heaven. And if that's so, and I'm glad to hear that. But what are you doing? What are you investing in heaven? Are you doing something in heaven? Are you investing something in heaven? Because if you know that you will go there, you should prepare. Amen? You should invest where you go. Amen? Amen. That's why that's the given. That's the guiding interpretation that I want you to see. And here's the third things that I want you to see. And we will go to the message this morning. I want you to see the godly insight. The godly insight. Being rich or having a lot of material things is not against the will of God. And as a matter of fact, God's desire for every one of us is to have a blessed life. As a matter of fact, God's desire from the beginning, even from when he created Adam and Eve, from the beginning, God wants us, every one of us, to have a beautiful life, a bountiful life, a life that is full of blessing. That's God's desire to every one of us. And when you read, you study from the Old Testament, there are many people who serve God faithfully. That's why God blessed them so much. No wonder God blessed Abraham. You read the, the studies, the life of Job, God blessed Job. Actually, he's the, the richest man that live in their area. God bless King Solomon. Amen. Because that's what God's desire for you and I. Amen. And then we read John chapter 10, verse 10, that, that, I, that I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. God wants us to live a better life, a best life. Amen. That's why if there are Christians, actually if there are people who deserve a blessing, a better life, a happy life, a life that is full of blessing, that should be the Christian. That should we Christian. Amen. But no, but so many times it's so sad because so many times we keep saying we're Christian, but it seems we're failure. It seems we're in miserable. And you know why? Because we're trying to, to, to seek those material things and we forget God. We, we are looking for the blessing, but we forgot the giver of all the blessing. Amen? That's why if you want to be blessed by God, you can find that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. That we will just put God first in our life. God will just add the things that we need. Amen? That's the secret on how to be blessed by God 
if we will put God first in our life. And I believe God bless us to be a blessing to others. As God bless us our life, we should be a blessing to others, especially to the work of the Lord, to God's ministry. Amen. That's why my question this morning, how important to you the guidance of the Lord? If you believe with all your heart that this word that we read is the word of God and this, is guide, this word is guiding us on how to secure our treasure in heaven. If, if we believe that, then we will know and we want to know and we will do what God wants us to do. God's instructed us on how to secure a true treasure. Amen. That's why we need to, and if we believe that, then we will know, we will do and we will obey the instruction of the Lord. Think about this before we invest when it comes to earthly treasure. You invest in something. If you do the business, you will study that business. If you invest your money with some, some company, you will know because you want that your money will get a profit. Amen. So many of us of you this morning, you work so hard, and you don't care if you get tired, if you work under the sun, if you get dirt, you work three kinds of jobs sometimes because you want to have a money, you want to have a, a enough for your kids, for your family, for your people, which is good. Where there is nothing wrong about that. You are so eager. You don't you don't care because you want to have income. And that's good. But what I want you to see and to realize this morning, I hope and I pray that when it comes to heavenly treasure, we have that same energy. We have that same thinking. We have that same enthusiastic enthusiasm that we will do everything just to invest, just to have treasure in heaven. Amen. Amen. Don't just focus on the treasure here on earth, but also in heaven. So I have three things this morning. It's like you, you heard this before, you know it, but you might forget it. So I'm just here to remind you how to secure a true treasure, number one, by serving and ministering. Amen? It's not new to you that we know that God saved us for a reason. Amen? And that is to serve Him. Amen? We are saved to serve God. Amen? So that's the number one to secure a true treasure is by serving and ministering. Amen? God expected you and I for you, for us to serve God, amen. That's why if you're serving, if you save this morning, then and that's a blessing, amen. But but the question is, are we serving God? Are we doing something for God? Are we willing to sacrifice for God? That's why there is a warning in Matthew chapter 6 in verse 21, for where your treasure is, there where your heart be also. That's why Christian, be careful where we putting our treasure because our heart will follow and no wonder so many Christians now they don't care about spiritual things, they don't care about heavenly treasure, their heart is just in this world because their heart, their treasure is just here on earth Amen, but remember this we, we don't just invest treasure in this world, but invest I hope we are also investing treasure in heaven by serving and ministering. Amen. And then you don't need to be a missionary to serve God. You don't need to be a pastor to serve God. There are so many ways. I'm just uh, I was talking to our brother at the back that there are so many ways to serve God. Amen. We can, we can serve God by loving people. We can serve God by encouraging people, by sharing God's word through singing. Amen. Through cleaning the church, through praying, through giving. There are so many ways to serve God. God expected you and me to serve God. Amen? And for you to serve God, for you to secure a true treasure in heaven, make sure that you have a relationship with God. Amen? You cannot open an account. You cannot secure a true 
treasure you unless you have relationship with God. I hope and I pray that all of us that are here this morning have a relationship with God. Amen. Sure that we're going to heaven. And if you are, then start serving. If start securing your true treasure in heaven by serving and ministering. Amen. Amen. I'm glad if you have account here on earth. I'm glad if you have a couple bank account in this world, that's good. Amen. I'm glad to hear if you have so many investment in that account. Many you, maybe you have six digit in your account. That's a blessing. Amen. But how about your account in heaven? Amen. Amen. Are we investing our account? Are we saving in that account in heaven? Don't just save in your account here in this world, but also save, secure a true treasure there in heaven. Amen. So maybe you served God before and you stop, start investing again. Amen? Amen. Update your account. Here, if you, your account did not move, you did not touch your account for a long time here in, in this world, here in their country, because that's what we, we do in the Philippines. I have an account in the Philippines and it's just closed a couple times because I did not invest. It didn't, I don't have transaction for a couple years because I don't have money to put in that account and it will be close amen and maybe same thing here if you don't invest your clothes will account will become inactive so maybe your account in heaven is inactive please update your account Re update your account reactive your account by serving and ministering amen let's serve god let's minister to others. Amen. And secondly, by supporting the mission of God. And I'm glad you, you, you're doing that. And, and, and no wonder God, God bless this church. God bless many of you because you love the mission of God. you supporting the mission of God. And remember this, mission is the heart of God. Mission is reaching people. Amen. Mission is sharing the gospel. Amen. And in our, your mission, you might not able to go to the Philippines, but you have your mission field here. Your how, sometimes your, your family is your mission field. Your neighbor is your mission field. Your, your community is your mission field. Let's support the mission of God. And that is to Share the gospel. I told to my wife, with the, the support that, that we have, we, we came here with 600 support. That's what I, I raised 2006, 2019. I'm, I'm, when I, the last time I came here, but with that support, I told to my wife, we need to support the pastor. As of now, we, have, we are supporting five pastors in the Philippines. And God's willing, we will keep doing that as long as we are able. I remember when Paul got saved, his heart, he became a mission-minded Christian. We know the background of Paul, but when, when Paul encountered God, when Paul got saved, he became a mis great, actually he's a great missionary. He served God. He shared the gospel. He didn't take his own life because he believed that after God Paul but after Paul got saved, he knows that the life that he's living is not him anymore, but it's for God. He told in Galatians chapter two, verse twenty, I am crucified with Christ. I am I am I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ live in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved, he gave himself for me. Amen. This is not our life. This is for God. We use it for God's glory, for Amen. God's ministry. Amen. Yes. That's why Paul, if you will read Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 down to verse 19, Paul is simply saying, writing these churches, this Christian that he that who helped him while he is in the mission field, he told them that all those support, all those help that they sent to him, 
okay while he is doing the the mission of god while he is in the mission field i want you to read in philippians chapter 4 i want you to see i will read in verse 4 for you to to understand what i'm trying to say here in chapter in verse 10 that i am now in, in philippians chapter 4 in verse 10 but i rejoice in the lord greatly that now at the last of your care had flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lack opportunity. But I want you to see in verse 9, 17, let's jump in verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruits that may abound to your account. Paul is simply saying all those things that you, you're just doing, you're just sharing, sacrificing God's, Ministry in God's mission, it just added to your account. But I have all and abound, and I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, will pleasing to God. That's why Paul, in verse 19, he said, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your, your sacrifice, your support, your help in the mission of God that is a sweet smell of God, a, a sweet smell, Amen. will pleasing to God. And Paul is simply saying in verse 19, I may not able to pay you back, I might not able to pay you in return, but the God that I am serving is the one who will bless you. Yes. He's the one who will pay back, who will put that account. It put that in your account. Amen. So how to secure a true treasure in heaven? By supporting the mission of God. As a matter of fact, without the mission, no one of us are here this morning thank god there are people who came out who stepped out of their comfort zone just to reach us just just to share the word of god to us just to share us that good news there are people who prayed for us there are people who give us gospel tracts there are people who who visited us who invited us to the church and because they are concerned about us they are obedient enough to do the mission of god and that is to share the word of god the good news amen, amen. and god that's why we are here this morning and i want to remind you i want to tell it to every one of us that all our labor is not in vain amen. our labor our effort is not in vain. That's why Paul is encouraging the Christian in, in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let us support the mission of God. That is to share the gospel. And lastly, and I will be done, by sharing to God's ministry. By sharing to God's ministry, actually the ministry that we have, I always tell to these people, to our people in the Philippines, the ministry that we have is not our ministry, it's God's ministry. God has just given us the opportunity to be part, to be used in God's ministry. And the ministry that you have here, this is God's ministry. Upper Peachtree Baptist Church is a God's ministry. So if we know and if we believe that this is God's ministry, I believe no one will support this ministry. No one will love this ministry except God's people, except God's children. Amen. So if you're a member in this church, if you attend in this church, share to God's ministry. This is God's ministry. Share to this ministry. And don't always think about money when we heard about the word sharing because sharing your time is more important. Sharing your talent is more important. Amen. Sharing your life 
life is more important. God expected us to share in God's ministry. Amen? Share your time. And as I'm Keep telling you, if you understand and if you really believe that after you got saved, we are redeemed by the blood of, of the precious blood of Christ, amen? So if we are redeemed, then this life is not ours anymore. It is for God, then it should be used for God's ministry, for God's purpose, for God's glory, amen? This is not our life. Be careful when we are using how the way we use this life. We, God is just allowing us to, to use this life, amen, for His glory. One day, God, we will all face God, amen, and God will judge us on how we spend, on how we use, on how we live this life here in this world, amen. That's why if you really believe that this is for God, then use for God's glory. Share to God's ministry. Because if you share your life, you say, Lord, this life is not mine. This is yours. Then it's easy to give your time. It is easy to give your talent. It's easy to give your treasure. Amen? Amen. It all will follow. Giving your time is not a problem anymore because at the first, this is not yours. Amen? Giving your talent is, that is coming from God. God wants you God wants us to use any talent that we have. If you have talent in singing, if you have talent in, in talking people, use that for God's ministry, for God's glory. Amen? And your treasure will follow. And don't say that whatever you have is you got that because you work so hard. You're so smart enough. That's why you have a lot of things. It's coming from God. Amen. Amen. Our intellect, our strength, it's all come from God that we use to have whatever we have. So I'm here to remind you in case you forget, everything we have is come from God. Amen. Use it for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. That's why if you, leave, if you give your life, giving is not a problem anymore. Amen? Amen? If we really love the Lord, you cannot yeah. say, because love is a action. If we love God, then we will do something for God. Amen? Amen. Pastor, I remember one pastor that, that want to build a uh, auditorium. And he keep, you know, announcing that for six months. Every Sunday church, we need to have pledge, we need to have sacrifice giving, special giving for our auditorium project. I want to build auditorium for, for the expansion of our ministry for six months. People, it's like they don't hear anything. No one commit. But one Sunday, this pastor is making two announcements. He's so smart and he announced church. I have announcement this morning. The first one is good news. The second one is bad news. You want what you want to hear first. The people said, Pastor, we want to hear the good news. And the pastor said, Church, the good news is we have the money to build our auditorium. They clapped their hands and said, That's good news, Pastor. That's really a good news. Pastor, what is the bad news? The pastor said, Church, the bad news is the money is still in your pocket. You need to give that. <laughs> Church, if we love God, then giving is not a problem. Sacrificing is not a problem. Amen? This morning, are we serving God? Are we sharing to God's ministry? If you are, keep doing it. Amen? But if not, start now. Start investing your treasure in heaven before it's too late. Remember this, one day we will be all gone. This world is not our home. Amen. Amen. We cannot bring anything in this world, but we can do something. The only thing that we can bring in heaven is the soul that we can bring to Christ. Amen. Amen. Just keep serving God. Secure the true treasure by serving and ministering, by supporting the mission of God, by sharing to God's ministry. Amen. Amen. God, time will come. We will face God. 
This is what the Bible says. And God will judge us. And I hope and I pray that we have the confidence to face God and say, God, I did my best. I hope and I pray that God will tell, will able to tell to every one of us, welcome the good and faithful servant. God will recognize our work, our labor, our sacrifice, and God will reward us one day. Amen. Amen. Let's keep serving the Lord. Let's close our eyes, bow our head. I will pray and I will call Pastor Derek to, to close us in service this morning. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word that always reminded us. Thank you, Lord, for, for loving us. Thank you for saving our soul. And Lord, may you always remind us that we are saved to serve you. May you continue to use our life, Lord, to those people, to be an instrument to those people that don't know you. May they be able to know you through our life, through our testimony. And Lord, may you continue to use this in every one of us for your glory. May you continue to bless us to be a blessing to others for your glory. And we want to thank you, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to give you all the glory this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Pastor, thank you so much, church, for your time.